beloved in Christ, grace to you in peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning to everyone. Thank you, choir. It's nice to see so many people in church this morning, to hear the music, to sing the songs, and most importantly, to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I wonder if you realize just how important the word resurrection is for the Christian faith. You see, the most representative word of the Christian religion is the word resurrection. If we had to choose one word to express and sum up the very essence of our faith, we would absolutely have to choose that word. Because this is essentially what Christianity is. A religious conviction of res resurrection. And this is what the gospel message offers us today on this glorious Easter morning. The power of the resurrection and the message that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. Our reading for today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 12 through verse 21. I would ask if you're able to rise out of respect for God's glorious truth. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. These are your holy words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. Please be seated. Now these endless and timeless words from the 15th chapter of the 1 Corinthians, you know, they certainly mark and declare a very, very important fact. They make something really clear to us as we read that. And that is that the great apostle Paul, the author, believed unquestionably in the literal, bodily, visible resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. There was absolutely no doubt in Paul's mind whatsoever. And we can look at every other reference in the New Testament where the writer talks about the resurrection and we will run into exactly the same thing. That those who wrote about the resurrection in the Bible believed it. There was no doubt in their minds. There was a burning certainty from all of the writers that Christ had conquered death and was alive forever. And this is not some add-on to the faith. This was the faith. This is Christianity. Resurrection is the gospel message. Our only task is to face ourselves as to whether we believe it or not. And this is so important for us to understand. Because if there is anyone here in church or anyone online who hears my voice right now and who says, I don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Well, they will still have to admit if they're honest that those who lived at the time of Christ and who wrote about it in the Bible certainly believed it. Your statement, I don't believe it, does not match the total certainty that was told by those who saw Christ after he was resurrected. So if you say, well, I don't believe it, I say to you, try telling that to Paul. Try telling that to Peter or to Thomas or any of the other New Testament writers. Because they absolutely believed it. What are we here for today? We are here to proclaim Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. 
If Christians are overwhelmed with enthusiasm on this resurrection day, if your pastor's voice is a little loud and emphatic this morning, this is it. For the pastor, for the congregation, for the choir, for all the Christians, for the church all over the world, this day is what it's all about, my friends. This is it. But if this isn't it, if it isn't real, we've got nothing to give you. 1 Corinthians 15, 14 reads, And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. If Christ has not been raised, I've got nothing of value to say. Anybody can die. If Jesus had stayed in that tomb, what would it all have been about? Not much hope. Not much help. No message to give. Oh, I suppose I could talk about global warming, politics, Donald Trump. There are lots of things to talk about. And they are being talked about in the pulpits of America today to the sad neglect of this glorious message of the resurrection. Oh, I could give many lectures on the philosophies of government. Those who know me personally, oh, they know I can. I could talk about email scandals, the out of control spending in Washington, D.C., the terrible attack in Belgium and our president doing the wave at a baseball game and then the tango in some communist country. Sure, I could talk about that. So yes, there are lots of subjects pastors can talk about today, which personally I don't think pastors have much business talking about in the pulpit, but I could join the club and I could do it. You see, my friends, there is a watered down, politically corrected social gospel that has been substituted for the true gospel. And I could be part of that social gospel if I had no message to tell. But thanks be to God, I do have a message to tell. And it's the message of the resurrection. So if I am emphatic and insistent today, it is because this is it, my friends. This is the day for the Christian church. This is it for me. This is it for you. You see, loved ones, everyone in this church depends on this message. Because Christianity is essentially the message of resurrection. If you take the resurrection away, you immediately destroy Christianity. The resurrection is the gospel. The gospel is resurrection. You either realize that Jesus lives today or, or, or Christianity is a dead religion. You see, without the resurrection, Christianity would be like Buddhism or the religion of Islam or Confucianism or other isms in the world. They have coffins for their great emblems. However, because of the resurrection, ours is an empty tomb. Mark 16, 5 and 6 reads, and entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. He has risen. He is not here. Those were the glorious words that were spoken to Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome when they went very early on that first day of the week to anoint what they thought would be the lifeless body of Jesus. But that was not the case. The tomb was empty. Jesus had risen. He was not there. And Jesus lives today. Loved ones, the resurrection is a fact. It would have been impossible for the evangelists and the apostles who wrote about it in Scripture to have persistently continued in proclaiming the truths that they wrote about if Jesus had not actually risen from the dead and they not known this fact as surely as they knew other facts. 
The resurrection is true. It is a historical certainty. Jesus is real. He walked on the earth. He died on the cross. He rose again from the dead. It is as much of a fact as any event in history. We celebrate the 4th of July. Why? Because that's the day we signed the Declaration of Independence. But then some will say, well, they hear about the resurrection and they might say, well, sorry, but that's not the same kind of history. Is that true? Of course not. And what about Jew the Jewish historian Josephus, who lived in the first century and wrote about Christ? From Josephus Antiquities, it reads, Now there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man. For he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Christ. And when Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross, those that loved him at the first did not forsake him, for he appeared to them alive again on the third day. For he appeared to them alive again on the third day. As the divine prophets had foretold these and 10,000 other wonderful things concerning him. And the tribe of Christians, so named from him, are not extinct at this day. Now Josephus was like a news reporting journalist would be today. Just capturing the events of history. When you watch the news at night, do you believe what you hear and see? Josephus was just reporting. And he reported that Jesus came back from the grave. My friends, the resurrection is real. There is not one New Testament writer who says about Christ, well, I think he rose from the dead. Gee, I hope he rose from the dead. I don't know if he rose from the dead. No, that's not what they say at all. They all say he rose from the dead. And loved ones, there were at least 12 eyewitness accounts and appearances of Christ after he rose from the dead. And the Bible even tells us that Christ also appeared to more than 500 people at once. 1 Corinthians 15, 6 reads, Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. 500 people. Now there's a good crowd in here today, but we're not at 500 yet. 500 people. Can you imagine that? The resurrection is true. But a pastor doesn't preach necessarily to cause one to believe this truth. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. But the pastor verifies truth whether one believes it or not. But just think for a moment what this message does to you and to me, my friends. It tells you and me that we are meant for something more than this world. You know, some people that may hear my voice today, they might be tired of life or maybe just plain worried. Perhaps you are concerned about the world problems going on right now. Maybe there are people who are listening to my voice who are sick, possibly dying. Maybe some are lonely today. But to all of you, let me tell you, this resurrection tells you and me that there is more to life than this earthly existence. It tells me that all of the suffering and the heartache and the sorrow of life will one day end to be followed at the grave by a new and glorious life that is eternal where there is no more sorrow, no more sadness, no more death. And loved ones, this statement is in complete harmony with the instincts of humanity. 
I mean, where could you and I, who are just plain creatures of the dust, get this sublime idea of immortal existence if there were no such thing? What causes the most pagan civilizations on the face of this earth to put some material goods by the grave for that departed loved one? They never heard of Jesus, but they have something inside them which tells them that there is a life beyond the grave. Likewise, this message of Easter and resurrection tells you and me that there is another life. Now the question comes, are you prepared for it? You know, so many people today take such good care of their bodies and then neglect their souls. But my friends, it is the soul we want to talk about. For it is only the body in this life that dies. Are you taking care of your soul? Do you open your Bible to hear God speak? What about your prayer life? Are you praying? Are you readying yourself for heaven? Loved ones, think about it. You and I, because Jesus died on the cross and rose again, can live with our Father in heaven. Now maybe perhaps you're one who says, well, I don't want to live in heaven. I hope when I'm dead, I'm dead. Then I have to ask in all sincerity, what did you live for anyway? To get that new car, to own all that real estate, to possess all those things that stay here after you're dead? Think how utterly hopeless this world is without a resurrection. Can you imagine being placed on this earth merely to live a life, to get up in the morning, to go to work, to come back, to go to work, to get up, to make some money, to get older, put a little color in your hair, and die? What's the point of it? What is life all about if it ends at the grave? But be honest. Be honest. You don't really believe that. Because you know better. You're not going to die and be put into the ground and that's the end of it. You're going to live. It just depends on where. If a person says, I'm going to take my life and then commit suicide, they really haven't taken their life because they still have a soul. The soul lives on. No one can get rid of that soul by killing the earthly body. The soul is the immortal part. It will always be there. Loved ones, all that I'm telling you today and what Scripture so clearly points out to each of us is that your soul your soul is invited to live with Jesus. Your soul is invited to go into the universe with God's great creation and be a part of all that God has made for his children. And my friends, what God has made for those who receive his son is simply unimaginable. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 2.9, what no eye has seen nor ear heard, nor heart of man imagined how wonderful it will be to be with God for those who love him. This is going to be such a glorious day when we come into the presence of the King of Kings. My friends, God loves us so much. He sent his son to be brutalized and put to death on the cross for us. And it is Christ that offers us freedom from the trials and the hardships of this life. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 reads, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And John 14, 1 reads, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Loved ones, this, 
is the hope of Easter and the resurrection. There is no greater message to hear at any time than this message of resurrection. So don't get worried about the economy. Don't worry too much about what's happening in the Middle East. If our Secretary of State falls on his face over some of these particular problems, don't worry. If the President acts or fails to act on a particular bill or ignores our problems and goes off to the golf course, don't be too concerned. If Congress continues to bungle its way through many of the problems we have, don't worry about it. Even if a terrorist attack were to hit close to home, don't be too alarmed. Why? Because we have heaven as our home. This isn't our dwelling place. We're just strangers walking through. It just depends on how you are walking through. Loved ones, the point of this Easter day is to tell everyone that the message of resurrection is certain and sure. There is life beyond the grave. There is true joy for every Christian. And there is hope also for the one who is living in sin right now. All they need to do is repent of their sins and join the rest of us. Loved ones, the apostles, all the prophets, and every Christian who has had a real experience with Jesus Christ knows what I'm saying today is true. What we need is to get back to the excitement of those first Christians and what they demonstrated in their lives. The Bible tells us that when the women saw that the tomb was empty, they ran from the tomb to tell Peter, and he ran back. They didn't walk. They ran out of breath. We need to recapture that enthusiasm. My friends, if you have a Savior today who loves you so very, very much, we don't want to leave this church today troubled about anything. You don't want to leave this church unhappy. You want to be happy. And if you are not happy today, you will never be happy. If you take drugs either legally prescribed or unlawfully obtained to make yourself feel better, I have good news for you. Try Jesus Christ because He is a prescription that works. So what must you do? It's simple. Just believe the message of the resurrection. Just say, yes, Father. Yes, Jesus, I believe in what you did for me. Loved ones, faith isn't some incomprehensible foolishness. Faith is saying with sincerity, I'm going to believe it. I'm going to put my whole life on the line. I'm going to stake all I know on Jesus. I am determined to let Christ be the answer in my life. I'm not going to worry about my friends who don't believe. I'm going to worry about the things that matter to me. I'm not going to worry about all the other things in this life, and I'm not going to let anything bog me down. I am simply going to see life as moving towards that day when I stand. Stand in the Father's kingdom. My dear friends, Jesus suffered and died nailed to the cross for you. And his sacrifice on the cross redeems us from sin and from death. The glorious resurrection is a historical fact, one that has been witnessed and recorded over and over and over again. For those who enjoy life now and don't see the necessity of another life, I say to you, you haven't seen anything yet and neither have I. This marvelous loving Father who has made all of the universe has some wonderful things in store for us who believe. Don't leave this church today without Jesus Christ. He is the answer to every problem you have because He lives. My friends, it is in the cross of Christ that our hope is found. 
In his shed blood, our salvation is secured. By his death, we are given life. And by his resurrection, we find our lasting peace and joy. So leave this service today with a smile in your hearts and a joy unspeakable on your lips because Jesus loves you and he wants you and you and you and you and you in his kingdom. Believe that truth. Then go tell others about the Christ who loves them so much. He is risen. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.